I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. I want to share some things with you. Um, as you know, I was in the Holy Eucharist room or the tomb, as some people refer to it in our church building, for seven days I did not leave the altar. I stayed at the altar for seven days. And the first three days or the first 72 hours of that prayer uh, experience at the altar, day and night, that is, I, um, I fasted. Uh, nothing went down the esophagus. Uh, I uh, took no water and drank no, uh, ate no food. Um, but I, what, what I want to say to you uh, today is that I have some things I want to share with you. And I, um, I, I, I know that they are extremely uh, critical for this hour with respect to the fact that the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work here on planet Earth. But I want you to, uh, to understand, well, and we're continuing, by the way, the subject matter of the Atla explosive um, uh, celebration. And maybe we'll call this part three. But listen to me. Here's what I want to share with you. The Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work on planet Earth. You say, well, Pastor Ben, how do you know that? Well, let me, let me suggest something to you that are biblically astute. Those, those of you who know the Bible, that um, you know that Jesus did prophesy there would be a tribulation. You know that, that all of creation is going to be destroyed except for a small group of people called the elect. And obviously this small group of people have to have a land mass in order to be able uh, to maintain and sustain themselves. And not just that, but that, that land mass will then be the platform or the land temple or the holy land where Jesus will conduct the first resurrection. If you're reading in the book of Revelation chapter 20. So we all know that that's going to happen, at least you should know. Then what I want to say to you is that that will not, the Holy Ghost in the earth today would be counter, it would be counter to the destruction process. The, the, the Holy Ghost is maintaining pretty much much of the sanity if the, you, that, that is presently happening in the world today. And so when he withdraws, then it, there's no problem with the Lord sending the power or using people like Donald Trump or Barack Obama or others to destroy the world. But it, when the Holy Ghost is there and he is in people, you know, the Holy Ghost is like this. If you... And, and, I, and this I wanted to share with you. If a swimmer, you, you realize if you hit, go into the water deeper than how tall you are, you have a little bit of air in your lungs. In fact, you have two bags of air in your lungs. No matter how heavy your body is, that air will always buoy up to the top. So if you understand that and get comfortable and relax, you can learn how to swim because that air will keep you, the air that's in your body will keep you afloat. Right? If you get scared and start drinking the water, then you're going to drown. Listen to me. The Holy, listen to me, please. The Holy Ghost, listen to me, Elder Smith. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost in you will keep you from destruction. Like the air in your body will keep you from drowning. The Holy Ghost in your body, in your presence, I should say, will keep you from destruction the way the air in your lungs will keep you from drowning. The Holy Ghost, but he's wrapping up his work, and he's in fewer and fewer and fewer and fewer people. Now, were you to go back 100 years ago, you would probably encounter a lot of people with the Holy Ghost, and so therefore your life would be markedly different. Circumstances would be different. But today, because he's in fewer and fewer 
and fewer people, you are now encountering devils and demons in people because he's wrapping up his work. He's not being born again. The, the process, uh, maybe it's best put this way, uh, Elder Butler, maybe it's best put this way, that the born again experience is dying. Write that down. The born again experience, which is the experience of the Holy Ghost, is dying. Now, the Holy Ghost is not dying, but the number of people that are being born again by the Holy Ghost is dying like a major atomic hydrogen bomb have gone off on planet Earth. The born again experience is dying, and a lot of people will not even know or even come in contact with somebody that is born again because he's wrapping up his word. Now, he used to be everywhere. He used to be everywhere, the Holy Ghost, he's, but he's wrapping up his work. The born again experience, there's most people on planet Earth today, God help our young people, are just one birth experience people. They're, they don't have the second birth or the born again experience. A lot of people think I'm crazy because I've been born into another nation. I've been born into another kingdom. And not only that, but then I'm, pro I'm prophesying another nation called Atla, where Jesus will return and where he will conduct on holy ground the first resurrection according to uh, Revelation chapter 20. But the born again experience, the born again experience is, is, is rare. It's, I mean, it's rare these days where it used to be everywhere, but it's rare. But he's wrapping up his work. But here's what I want to tell you. Listen to this very carefully. I want to say to you that Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 12, in order for you to be able to succeed and progress, at this time where the Holy Ghost was wrapping up his work and the born again experience is dying. Proverbs chapter three, verse one through 12. Uh, you should, most of you should be reading it every day. Some of you have read it quite a bit anyway. Is your key and your pattern, your daily pattern of success during the tribulation. It is written by the wisest and richest man ever, Solomon, son of David, son of King David, King Solomon. If you will adhere to Proverbs chapter 3, and I'm going to come back to that uh, once I finish this Daniel teaching and they call for help for Michael to come help and for, call for help for me. I'll, I'll come back and I'll read that, but make note of this now. In order for you to survive this period where the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work and the born again experience, is very, there are very few people that are being born of the Holy Ghost. They're being born of the flesh. And actually, that's lessening too as well. It's not as much as they used to be. Not many people, not as many and women having babies now, is they? mainly because they're going into this other sexual identity. But the born-again experience is dying. The Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. If you have the Holy Ghost, you will survive. If you have the Holy Ghost, you will survive. You will survive every assault, every attempt, if you have the Holy Ghost. Now here, here's some things I want you to, to understand. That we're in a period now where the Holy Ghost is not in people, so you're going to have to work a little bit harder to maintain your well-being. And you're, you're gonna definitely going to need the Holy Ghost yourself. Now, 
what you need to be able to do is I want to give you some. First of all, we're going to read Proverbs chapter uh, three, verses one through twelve. We're, we're going to read that. We're going to go, get back to that next week. We're not going to do it today. You know it's there. We're going to get back and we're going to read Daniel chapter ten. We're going to get all those scriptures. We're going to read Saint John's Gospel chapter sixteen. We're going to read all of that. All of that we're going to get to. I'm just laying a, I'm laying out the, the groundwork now for your success. I said I'm laying out the groundwork now for your success. Here's what you need to be able to master. You need to become a master. Item number one, I told you to write down that the born again experience is dying. You should have written that down. Number two, you need to write this down. Learn how to resist Temptation. Learn how to resist temptation. The greatest weapon that the devil has is temptation. You will remember that's the weapon he used against the mighty anointed Eve and the mighty anointed and powerful Adam. What did he use to destroy them? He used temptation. That's his, be that's his number one weapon. You're going to have to learn how to deal with it. You're going to have to learn how to deal with temptation. He used that weapon against Eve. He used it against Adam. He used it against Jesus. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, when Jesus was out in the wilderness, he used it against me. He called him, so when he came up and he rolled up on me back in 1978, he called himself King Totally Good Joseph. That's the name he gave himself. They totally good that he was a king. And he tempted me. And he caught me at my lowest point in my life. Well, no, 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 that wasn't my lowest point. But he caught me at a, at a, at a time at which I had not started the ministry that God had, has given to me that I'm doing right now and praise God for it. He tempted me. He said that if I would speak good words only, don't rebuke people, don't chasten people, don't speak fiery words, just speak good words, that I would fill up stadiums and people would come to hear me and I'd be very successful. I'd have a lot of money. And he, he spent a whole hour just talking about good words and how prosperous I would be and how everybody would think I was very successful. But I couldn't speak any fiery words. I couldn't speak any chastening words. I couldn't rebuke anybody. I couldn't even preach the Bible, quite frankly. So the Bible got a lot of curses in it. The Bible got a lot of, you go, if you sin, those that believe shall be saved. And those that believe not will go to hell. The Bible got a lot of that in there. I couldn't even do that. And you notice people like Joel Osteen and T.D. Jakes, they don't do it either. They don't preach those, you're going to hell. They just say, well, everybody, you know, they, they, because I'm, I'm confident that King Tolly Joseph talked to Joel Osteen. I can tell you, I, I bet my life on that. I bet I talked to T.D. Jakes. When T.D. Jakes left Charlottesville, West Virginia, I'm, I, I'm, I, I guarantee you that, that the, the King Tolly Good Joseph talked to T.D. Jakes when he was in Charlottesville, Virginia pastor that little old church and told him how to make how to become a mega church. He moved down to Dallas. I guarantee you that. I, I, I stake my seat in heaven on that one. But he talked to me. So he, the greatest weapon that Satan has is temptation. He used it against Jesus. He thought it would work. Temptation. Learn how to re now the reason why is this, uh, because the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. You're going to encounter more temptation. And I'm not temptation just for sexual encounters. That, that's probably going to be the last thing. But there'll be temptations to do wrong. Temptations to, uh, well, I think under the temptations category, first of all, write down the, the born-again experience is dying. 
Number two, learn to resist temptation. And then under number two, put point A, resist the temptation of anger. Resist that. Resist the temptation of letting the devil make you angry. Resist it. The resist it. I mean, even Jesus got angered. If you look at Mark's Gospel, chapter three, the Bible says Jesus looked upon them, that crowd of hypocrites sitting up in that church with anger. So resist on the point two, segment A. Resist temptation to get angry. Stay cool. Stay calm. Stay collected. Taylor Secret. I um I I, I practice this. I go crowds and say, Pastor Man, you do that, yeah. I practice this that when, you know, let's say for instance, I'm walking down the street or I'm in a hotel or in an elevator or I'm in some place and somebody comes up to me and threatens to rob me, right? Just out of nowhere, out of the blue, I'm just, you're doing your regular thing, and out of the blue, somebody comes up to you at night, or you can't, then you're in a, in a space, you know, all, it's kind of, all kind of things, the devil is all, he's lurking. I, what I do is practice, <laughs> when I'm not preaching, I practice how to remain calm. Don't get angry. He pulls a gun, say, give me your money, give me your watch, <laughs> give me your gold teeth. <laughs> um, I practice, I do this, I just do that. And I've never had this kind of happen to me. What the hell, what the hell, did something happen to me? I practice, right now, I, I practice how to stay calm. I practice, now I'll tell you why that's important, because also as a pastor you encounter a lot of different things, a lot of different people, and you encounter a lot of different um, Experience it. So resist temptation, resist anger, practice how to stay calm. I remember once I was at a funeral, and this this woman, I only she wasn't a preacher, I wouldn't call her a preacher, she was a, a witch. But she was she was up, she was doing what we refer to as preaching. Was was tap dancing on my liver. She actually got up in my face. This woman stepped down out the pulpit and got up in my face and stood there, this witch. I wouldn't call her a preacher. This witch stood up in my face for half an hour and kept yelling at me, right? I'm sitting in church, I'm sitting there. So it took everything I've ever learned in life not to get up and flatten that woman. <laughs> it took every, that witch. But I stayed calm. I stayed calm. I, I, my temperature didn't rise. My blood pressure didn't go up. And she just kept barking at me and barking at me in a church. She was a witch. She called herself a preacher. Just kept barking at me and barking at me and barking at me. And so <laughs> I looked behind her and I saw something that I had not seen before. Uh, there was a, 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 a there was a, a man in this church. His name was Lee Weston, or Weston, or something like that, and. He was dating this woman named Margaret Hugh. And she had a daughter, 15, 16, 17. So I don't know, I guess he was living in the house. So he was having sex with the mother. He had sex with the daughter and made the daughter pregnant. She got pregnant, and but she never told anybody who the daddy was. She's 15 years old, 15, 16, she got pregnant. And I saw that, that Lee Weston was the father. Of that, of that boy that when that girl got pregnant at 15, 16 years old and the mama and the daughter was keeping it a secret from the world. But when that witch was standing in front of me, that's when the truth came. And that's what they were trying to cover up. The witch knew that I knew that the, uh, that 15, 16 year old girl was having sex with that old man, having sex with her, with her mama's man. They were both having sex in the same house, the daughter and the mama having sex with the same man. And then the, the daughter got pregnant, but the daughter would not tell the son who her father was, who his father was, and the, and, the, and the grandmother of the son wouldn't tell. So they were keeping it from the world. 
to that day, that witch stood in front of me and started barking and barking and barking at me. But you have to, so I had to learn, and I now don't get angry. Resist anger, part two, part B. Learn how to keep your cool. And I learned, you know, somebody cost me a knife with a knife or a gun, say, give me your money. I, 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 you can say, well, what you going to do with it if I give it to you? <laughs> You won't know what to do. Because my oh, 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 don't hit me, don't shoot me. I say, no, I said, well, what you gonna do with my money? <laughs> so, but the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. Number three, uh, seek the truth. Number three, seek the truth. Seek, persevere for, become a crusader. For the truth. Don't just listen to any lie. And don't just listen for or be uh, uh, enjoy any, any temporary satisfaction. I remember a few years ago, they had this thing called sweetener, this sugar, uh, splendor, you could, you could call it was a sweetener. It wasn't grain sugar, it was artificial sugar. And it was sweeter than sugar. It is what it was. There are things out there that are sweeter than the truth, mainly lies. Now be very careful. Always seek the truth. And whatever you do, tell yourself the truth. Number three, whatever you do, tell yourself the truth. And I'll, I'll, I'll pull your coat to this. You tell yourself the truth, you won't have time to have problem with anybody else because you'll have to deal with you. <laughs> when you start telling, tell yourself the truth. Don't lie, don't tell yourself the truth. <laughs> you won't have time to accuse anybody or anything. I guarantee you that. <laughs> you tell yourself the truth. So now, as I said before, the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work. And whereas... You used to meet people of like spirit, likeness of spirit. Everybody had the Holy Ghost. Well, a lot of people had the Holy Ghost. And so as a result of that, you didn't have to deal with the liars, the temptation, the ugly spirits. But now, there are few people that are born again. He's wrapping up his work, and there'll be fewer people a year from now if, if Jesus tarries. I don't know when he's coming back, but if he tarries. So avoid anger when possible and res resist temptation. So I want to get that to you. Now let me get back to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1. You're going to need to read it. You're going to need to know it. You're going to need to obey it. Now I told y'all this last year. You know I did. You're going to need to read Proverbs chapter 3. You're going to need to obey Proverbs chapter 3. Within those 12 verses, you can master the devil. You can master his angels. You can master the Catholic demons with Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. You've got to hold on to it. you got to hold on to it. The world is different now because the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his word. Now, Jesus sent the Holy Ghost, and he did a good work. But like the Apostle Paul, he's wrapping up his work. He's getting ready. He's fought a good fight, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. But he's wrapping up his word. But here in Atla, and he's focusing on Atla. Now, I, you know, I'll say this. I pray that you're not offended by it. But when Jesus returns, he's coming back to Atla. That's where he's coming back to. When Jesus returns, you know he's coming back. You know he's coming back. He told you he's coming back. And when he comes back, he has called me to preach, to cry aloud, and cry, righteousness. Cry aloud, righteousness. The street's so clean, you can actually take off your shoes and walk barefoot. But he's coming back when he comes back. You say, well, I don't know about that, Pastor Man. I, I, I agree with you on the whole matter of the 
resisting temptation. I agree with you on the whole matter of the the new the uh, the born again experience of dying. I agree with all that. I agree with you remaining calm. I agree with you about containing and controlling your anger. I agree with you about the truth and telling the truth. But now you're gonna tell me that you the whole, Jesus is coming back. To Atla. They go, well, what a minute, wait a minute. You, and you say, you say, you don't, you don't, now you don't believe anymore? Here, watch this. Watch this. You're dealing with Pastor Manny. You're not dealing with some amateur. You're not dealing with some neophyte. You're not dealing with somebody that came down with yesterday's rain. You're dealing with Pastor Manny. So you sat there and ingested and believed and made a commitment that you are going to tell, seek the truth at all costs, tell yourself the truth, you're going to avoid lying, you're going to avoid anger, because you realize that those are weapons you can use. You realize that temptation is what the devil did against Jesus. He did it against Adam. He did it against Eve. You realize that. You heard that good teaching. You heard that gold standard teaching. You heard that good teaching coming from Pastor Manny. You heard it. Right? And mainly about the truth, to tell yourself the truth. You heard that, and it was good teaching. Then Pastor Manny kept right on teaching and told you, after he put all that good teaching in you, resisting temptation, resisting lying, how to remain calm, uh, you heard all that good teaching about the Holy Ghost because that's his job, to lead you and to guide you into all truth. And you agree that Pastor Manny got the Holy Ghost because he just, he got the job of the Holy Ghost to lead and guide you into all truth. Pastor Manny just did that good teaching. And then when I told you that Jesus is returning to Atla, then you call me a liar and said you don't believe. Backing up now. What on earth? What are you made of? You just went through that whole process of realizing that I have the Holy Ghost. I did that good teaching about resisting temptation, how the devil tempted Jesus, how the devil tempted Eve, how the devil tempted Adam, how that witch stood in front of me. I just went through that whole good teaching. And you just agreed and said, good Lord, have mercy. I'm going to have power over the devil now. He's not going to defeat me. I'm going to learn how to resist. Pastor Manning, the, the job of the Holy Ghost is to lead and guide you into all truth. And Pastor Pastor Manning, you're teaching the truth. And then I said that Jesus is returning to Allah. Now you want to doubt me. Okay. Okay. All that good teaching that went before, I told you that Allah, that's what God said. The land where the people shall walk barefoot because the land is holy ground. I told you that. And now all of a sudden, I ain't no good teacher no more. I see. Oh, I see. Uh-huh. I see. All right. You know why? You know why that? Because that then puts you in a respect, a place of having to look upon me in a, in a status in which you're not willing to give me. <laughs> you're not willing to give me that kind of authority. And the other thing, you may not want to be able to give it to the people of of Allah, the members of Allah, you may not want to give them that privilege. Maybe you're Jewish or something, a, a Shemite, and you want to think that Jesus is going to return to, I don't know, someplace in Brooklyn, <laughs> or upstate New York, where Jesus is going to return to a Jewish enclave, and you're not willing to give that to the people of Harlem. Maybe that's your problem. Or maybe it's personal. Maybe you got a personal thing with me whereby you will take everything you can take from Pastor Manny if it don't cost you nothing. You will take, you will listen every day, five days a week, five times a day. You will listen and take everything you can take from Pastor Manny if it don't cost you nothing, if you don't have to give an offering, if you don't have to respond anyway, you'll take all you can. But then when it requires of you to believe Allah, you're not ready to give that up yet. You're not ready to give Pastor Manning that. You're not ready to give that up yet. You're not ready to give in order to receive because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back to Allah. That's right. That's where he's coming back to. So the, the power that God has given in this teaching is you need to resist temptation. Now, I told you this, that you need to avoid anger when possible. 
And so calm down. Don't get angry that I just laid you out. I just pulled your peep, your whole card. I just explained exactly what your problem is. You don't want to give. Now, all that teaching I was doing a few moments ago about anger, all that good teaching, you were, I mean, but it didn't cost you nothing. But now to believe Atla, it's going to cost you. You're going to have to give up something. You're going to have to, you're going to have to give up your own ideas, give up your own church. That's right. Give up your old no good snag tooth rabbit, reverend rabbit foot preaching and doctrine. You have to give that up. To believe out like you had to give up something. But see, now you could, that resisting anger, seeking the truth, knowing the devil's a tempter, knowing the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work, you wouldn't even go for that because it didn't cost you nothing. But now to believe out like you have to give up them lies. You have to give up that phony denomination you belong to. You have to give up that church you belong to to believe that it's coming back. Because, hey, listen, homie. If you believe that Jesus is coming back to Atla, you're going to try to be a part of it. You're going to do everything you can. You're going to get registered. You're going to send your tithing and your offering. You're going to send your first fruit offering. You're going to join the ministry. You're going to be up front. If you believe he's coming back here, if you believe he's coming back here, then you're going to, you got, you're going to give up all that stuff that you are right now and follow the man of God here in Atla. That that's why you call me, uh, put a check on me, because you had to give up to receive. Isn't that wonderful teaching? I told you, listen, you're, you're dealing with Pastor Man. You're not dealing with some Johnny come lately. You're not dealing with some neophyte. <laughs> you're dealing with Pastor Manning. You see what? See, I just peep your whole card. The reason why you don't believe Allah, the reason why you don't belong to Allah, is because you're going to have to give up all that junk in your trunk. That's right. You got to give up all that junk in your trunk to believe out now. Now, and many of you come and get as much of the good teaching, all that, Pastor Manny. Oh, that's some good teaching. Whoa, that's some good teaching. As long as it don't cost you anything. As long as it don't cost you that you have to tithe or give a first fruit offering or join the ministry, make the commitment. As long as you can get everything you can get without a commitment, you will take it because you're a snake. That's who you are. You like a snake, take. You like to take like a snake. That's who you are. That's who you, that's your spirit. You, in fact, you've been trained in the church that way. Get all you can and then can all you get and then sit on the can. But when it comes to giving up, you'll come listen to Pastor Manning every day, five days a week, five times a day, as long as it don't, you don't have to give up anything. Long enough to give up, but now when it comes to giving up some of that's now well, uh, so when I told you that Jesus is coming back to Atla, and many don't believe, but check this out. Listen to this. You because you and, and and it's true, you would have to give up, you gotta give up your church, you got to probably give up your family. You have to give up all that to believe Atla, to believe that Jesus is coming. You have to give it all up. You say, well, like, well, I tell you, when he does come back, you and your family can drown the way they did in the days of Noah and the great flood. That's right. That is right. That is right. So I, I wanted to be able to express those. I thank God for that teaching. I want you to pray on that. The fact that what you do, and not everybody, many of you have given up everything. Many of you have given up, you, you know, you're giving up all that religion, you're giving all that religiosity and churchianity, you're giving all that denominational stuff, you've given all that stuff up, all them slogans, and you've joined with Allah. Well, praise God. Thank God for you. I don't mean to ignore you or accuse you. Thank God. It's that crowd out there that hasn't done so. You hear me talking about the Holy Ghost. You look out on the streets, you see things are different now. And their market are different because he ain't out there no more. He ain't out there. The Holy Ghost ain't out there. He even used to be in the Catholic Church, the Holy Ghost. He ain't out there no more. It's rough out there. He ain't out there no more. America's crumbling like a dried up cookie. He ain't out there no more. But the, and so you, you appreciate that. 
Because that didn't cost you anything. You don't have to listen. It don't cost you nothing. You don't have to go in your checkbook. You don't have to write no tithe check. You don't have to send no offering. You can still go back to your, your churchianity and your religiosity and your denomination and still try to profit from, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tame my anger. I'm going to, Pastor Manny said, don't get angry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch my temptation to the devil will tempt me, and not just on sexual things. The devil tempt me to get angry. The devil tempt me to lie. The devil will tempt me to to avoid the truth, the devil. So I'm going to watch out for it. I find myself going down that road. I'm going to listen to Pastor Manning's teaching on temptation, and I'm going to overcome the devil in that, because that don't cost me nothing. I don't have to give Pastor Manning anything. You don't see me. You don't know me. I don't have to give any tithes and offering. I don't have to help keep the ministry flowing to me, pay the electric bills, pay the camera bills, pay the technician. I don't have to contribute anything to that. I'll just take everything I get and let somebody else do that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a food stamp uh, member of Pastor Manning's uh, ministry of Trust the Lord. I just take everything I can get and let, every, let the government pay for his. Tell him to call the government, ask the government for some finances. To call somebody else, let them pay for it. I let them pay for everything and uh, I'll let them give their money and I'll take my money and I'll go do something else with it. But I, I let somebody else pay. That's, I, I'm a freeloader. But don't, don't tell it, don't say it too loud. I'm a freeloader. Well, that's the truth. You are. You're a freeloader. You are a freeloader. Tell yourself, did I tell you to, your, to thine own self be true? First, tell yourself the truth. You're a freeloader. You want everybody to pay for everything. I bet you get food stamps. I bet you. <laughs> I bet you take pencils and paper clips from the office where you work. I bet you do. I bet you take food out of the supermarket. You're a freeloader. <laughs> You're a freeloader. Yeah, you are. You are a freeloader. Let somebody else pay for that. Yeah, <laughs> let the taxpayers pay for it. I ain't gonna do that. You are a freeloader, okay? Remember now we're dealing with the truth. Remember, we're dealing with the truth. Remember, we're dealing with the truth. Dealing with the truth. So, <laughs> you're a freeloader. So what you found out about yourself today? Found out you're a freeloader. Because when it comes to art law, that means you got to surrender. When it comes to art law, that means you're going to have to give. When it comes to art law, that means you're going to have to contribute. When it comes to art law, that means you're going to have to believe that when Jesus is coming back and your tithes and your offerings and your Sabbath worship is in order. You are a freeloader. Now, listen, let me, can, I just, can I just share something with you? I'm not here just to call you a freeloader. That's not my purpose. I'm here to elevate you, graduate you. Uh, that, that's what I want to do. I, I think you know that. I think you understand that. But the, so in order for you to survive, in order for you to survive the times in which we're now living, you, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. Now, I'm going to get to it next week. I got one more day this week of broadcasting. I don't know if I'll be able to get to it to tomorrow, uh, but I, I, I promise you I will get to it next week because it's written by the wisest, wealthiest man that ever, and we're going to have the darkest, most famous, famous, famous time coming. And Pro, Proverbs chapter 3, those words will sustain you. But the Holy Ghost, uh, well, you didn't have to fight as much evil. Let's say 100 years ago, you would encounter, here, even here in America, you would encounter maybe, I don't know, out of 12 people, five of those people would have the Holy Ghost. And the other seven would at least be afraid of the Holy Ghost. But today you encounter 12 people Maybe none of them in that first 12. You might have to go through sets of 12, 12, 12, 36 people before you find somebody with the Holy Ghost. So therefore, we're going to find a much more uh, in, environment where you're going to have to be stronger now in the Lord and in the power of his might than you have ever been in all your life if you wish to survive. So one of the things that you want to do is this. Remember a few moments ago, I told you to resist anger. Now, when I call you a freeloader, which is what you are, many of you, not everybody, but those of you who don't ever contribute anything, you let somebody else pay the electric bill, somebody else pay the camera, somebody else pay the live streaming bill, you're a freeloader, right? That's what you are. And, it, and you're not just that way with me. You, 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 that, that's your motto of life. Take all you can, can all you get, then sit on the can. You're a freeloader. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question, and I'm going to let you go because I figure 
Did you get angry with me when I called you a freeloader? Did you get angry with me? I'm, I'm talking to you. When I call you a freeloader, which is what you are, you are a freeloader, you are a moocher. <laughs> Did you get angry? I just told you to resist anger, right? <laughs> ah, I got you. Lord knows I got you. All right? You got angry because it's true. And the reason why you got angry is because if it wasn't true, <laughs> it wouldn't have bothered you. It's the truth that made you angry. And I want to say this to you. You're angry with the Holy Ghost. You're not angry with Pastor Manny. You're angry with the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Ghost that leads and guides into all truth. So this lesson was set up today to reveal the freeloaders. Right? So now what you're going to do about it? You're going to stay angry or you're going to repent and start contributing? Join the ministry. Start Sabbath worship. Humble yourself and survive through the power of God's word. What you going to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? So you're going to stop taking the paper clips and the pencils and pens from the office. Stop. <laughs> stop hooking up to somebody else's cable network. I don't think, think people do that anymore. Remember when everybody used to do that, use everybody else's cable? <laughs> Freeloaders, right? Yeah. The thing I think is most, uh, is most satanic about this is the devil blinds people. They actually come to the church to be a freeloader. <laughs> The last place you ought to be freeloading is the house of God. The, the last person you ought to be mooching off of is the man of God. The last thing you ought to be resisting and in his place putting your freeloading spirit is the word of God. But the devil is so crafty, he'll tell you, well, you don't have to give anything. You don't have to give anything. And then they make all kinds of reasons why you don't have to give. The devil will tell you, no, you don't have to give. Uh, you need this for yourself. Or you need this for the children. Or you need this for your wife. Or you need this for that and the other. Or you need this for your phone bill. You need, he'll tell you all of that. The devil will. So did you get angry with me? I just told you to resist anger. I told you to resist temptation. It, no, it, it, does, it does work. So if you, you know, somebody roll, roll up on you and says, you know, give me your money, just take your time. Take your time. And one of the things about, about the, I think what they, the, the teaching that now that the Holy Ghost is wrapping up his work um, is be very patient. Be very patient. Be patient with yourself. And be patient. Haste makes waste. Ever heard about that before? Haste makes waste. And your patience possess you. So be very patient. Be very patient. There are a lot of people who are hot-headed. <laughs> Ever hear that term before? Hot-headed. Yeah. That, I mean, they fly off the handle in an instant, even before they hear the whole story. They fly off the handle. But be very patient. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not a good boxer, fighter, anything like that. But if I have to fight, you know, physically, right, I'm going to take my time. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to watch what the person's getting ready to do. I'm going to try to anticipate their moves. I'll be patient. I'll be rush into it. There was a song from years ago that said, fools rush in. And so before I close this lesson today, because I want to bring up some of our young people. Are you going to stay angry with me? Is that what you're going to do? Are you going to stay angry with me or upset? Or are you, going to, are you going to lie to yourself and say, well, I know I'm a freeloader, but, you know, let somebody else. Are you going to finally step up and start being responsible for yourself? You know, you, there are a lot of people who like to play the government, milk the government, get as much as they can, take as much from everybody. A lot of people, you know, go to a place where you can just get as much food as you can get and can't even eat all of it. 
just take it because that's the, that's the spirit. Well, you need to get rid of that spirit. And you need to surrender. Surrender to Allah. That's right. Don't, don't get angry. After all that good teaching I did the first 15 minutes, and you, will, you realize if I, if I can stop being angry, because remember you got angry and you blew it. You got angry, said things you had no business saying. You got angry and messed up relationship with people that you, did, that you need relationship with. Now you shouldn't have gotten angry. Remember that? And you were tempted. And like that, that, like that witch that stood in front of me, that was uh, uh, that was that, that Melissa Hughes son and and mama daughter relationship with that one man. That that witch stood in front of me and tried to make me get angry with her. And I just stood there. I just sat there. I'm cool, calm. I'm cool, Manning. Right. The other thing is that I tell you, you know, you said that little bit got the condescending. I didn't think she, would, I didn't think she was worth my anger. Quite frankly, I mean, she wasn't. She didn't have that that much of an, of if you will, of a status. <laughs> yeah, you know, someone said that uh, that when we look at the universe, and uh, in terms of its, its span, how long and how old, how eternal it is, is like ants, a little bit of red ants down at the foot of the California redwood tree, looking up, comparing that ant to that redwood tree. And that's how I looked at that witch that was, in, that was trying to get me to, because she wanted me to get angry. She wanted me to do something, because to, to, she wanted everybody in the church to say, see, I told you, I told you about him. I told you, he, that's how he is. I told you, I told you. See, he ain't a man of God. That's what she was looking for. She wanted, she kept trying. I, she kept trying to, she peed on herself. She kept trying to get me to, because she, she wanted to show to the church. I told you, I told you. See, he ain't got the Holy Ghost. I got the Holy Ghost. Look at him. I got him angry. He's up cussing. He's up fussing to me. <laughs> she just kept trying and trying, and I just kept smiling and smiling and smiling. <laughs> but see, some people have gotten to you and caused you to blow it, right? So from now on, you're going to resist temptation. But first of all, you know, so you're going to resist temptation. You're not going to get angry with people, right? You're going to take your time, choose your battles, and when you throw your punch, <laughs> knock the living daylight out of people when you finally throw your punch. But that's what we, I, I got to go now because I, I, t I told Honor LaFleur I'm going to have him sing today. So I got to go. So Honor, if you're listening in your crowd, uh, but what you going to do about that freeloading thing? What you going to do about that? And then in order to freeload, you know, you have to lie. You got to lie to the Holy Ghost. Yeah, you got to tell the Holy Ghost, I don't have it. The Holy Ghost, I don't, I can't give nothing. I can't give nothing to that good teaching. I, I hold you got to, you got to lie to the Holy Ghost because it's the Holy Ghost is doing the teaching right now, right? So you got to lie. To, not only are you a freeloader, right? You got to lie to the Holy Ghost. The devil got you. Yeah, got you. I know a lot of churches and church people specialize in that kind of activity. 